Right then, Ford KA. I think, I'm not sure what the title of this video is going to be. Maybe title it next one. How quickly can you build a race car? And uh, we'd say race car in inverted commas, although we do go racing. So let's see, a lot of people slag these off and say that it's not proper racing, but if there's 40 cars on a track and you're all trying to get in the lead, I'd say it is. It's all good fun. So we did a bit of racing last year in these, uh, in a car that we borrowed. I'll put some little picture up or video, whatever we've got. Um, and carrying on with that theme, I've been in some pink and girly. I've got some nice metallic purple car. So this has cost 230 quid and it were an MOT fail for all the bushes, some up with shockers and stuff like that, but we're not bothered. And um, a couple of little bits of welding, which we've already done that. We had a bit of time uh, between Christmas and New Year and just welded them sills up and away we go. So this could go back for an MOT and it probably still fail on bushes, but as far as um, welding's concerned, it's all good now. So this is the thing. The regulations state we can't do anything to I put on it. The regulations state we can't do anything to the engine, gearbox. All we can do is a few little bolt-ons which we'll have a look at. Where's a bloody bonnet catch on this thing? First time I've opened it. So here we go. 1.3, where are you going? 1.3, I think this is meant to say Duratech on there, but it's been uh, debadged. 70 horsepower, or it should be, which the dyno never lies, so we'll see what power it actually does. The only bits that we've not got that are coming, there's a thermostat housing outside the engine, which don't look too old on this to be fair, but they're known to crack, so we've ordered a genuine one of them, which you can get good aftermarket ones for like 40 or 50 quid, but we've decided just, if, it, if it's gonna fail on us, we want it to have been a genuine part and it'd be Unfortunate if it's failed, not because we've tried saving 50 quid. And the water pump's not here as well. So one problem they do have is they throw the auxiliary belt off every now and again, and that obviously does the water pump. So we're gonna see if we can do something or if there's something that wants working around to stop that happening, because we don't wanna be ruining races or ruining engines because of that. But pretty much everything under here is gonna have to stay as it is. All we're gonna do is service it which we'll have a look at the bits that we've got for that here. So get a clean, get a wipe down, get rid of the original bonnet, bonnet mechanism, and that'll be that. So I'll leave that open. Inside, we're going to rip it to bits. You can take the sound deadening and stuff like that out, which not um, not really bothered what we take out on this, really. But we'll just take every bit that you can see out. Leave door cards in because you can't do anything with the glass or the motors, so might as well leave it that windows work, so leave all the switches in and everything. Um, everything, else is, everything else is going to be coming out. So, as you can see, it's sat on the corner weight scales. So obviously before we start doing anything, we want to see how much it weighs, so there's pretty much no fuel in it. Well, it might be a fiver's worth in or something like that. And it weighs 875.5. So that's probably the minimum empty weight we're going to get it to even once we pull these bits in, because we're taking some seats out, putting a roll cage in, we're going to probably end up about at the same weight that we are now, I'd have said, but let's see, we'll know more later on where we end up. The minimum weight this can be, including a driver, is 950. So that means I'm about 80 kilos or so, Scott's about 80 kilos. So if we get a really light driver in, we're going to have to ballast up. If we get a really heavy driver in, really, we could have done with being lighter, but I don't know. We'll see who wants to drive it and who wants to have a go in, out in it before we do anything too crazy. We've got some ballast plates that we're using our other cars that we have cut, so we can uh, just throw some of them in if we need to, and that'll be going passenger side and do what you need to do. But looking at it, we're not going to have to do too much work, so we'll go over to bits and uh, we'll have a look at them. So the first big thing you can see, this is the safety devices roll cage. So this is a bolting cage, but the, as we any bolting cage, you've got to do a bit of welding. So there's like 
these foot plates that need welding in. Not sure where they go exactly. Got to weld them in. The, that's where the bolts go through into some little uh, threaded bosses there. So they've got to all be welded in. So we'll get all this unpacked and start getting that mocked up. Um, I don't know. It's not really. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Fire extinguisher, which this is not the cheapest one that they do. Um, but it's not the most expensive either. It's, it, it meets the regs, but it's an electronic one because we went with Steph Smart who went down a, a cheaper route and got the one with the pull cables and wish we'd never bothered because we put it in, went to scrutineering and it seized up in two days. It not even been out, I think it not even been out on the road in wet. So don't know, don't know why it did. So I said, I'm not doing that again. It took ages to get the cables right, stuff like that, whereas this will go in pretty quick and we've had this these lifeline ones in all our race cars for a long time and had no problems whatsoever harness not the usual one we get this is just an omp six point you know, we'll see it a bit better when we put it in but that is probably half the price of the um shroff ones that we normally use and meant to be pretty decent so we'll see and while we're on about costs again the car was 230 quid, obviously done a bit of work for the MOT side and all the bits that you see here, including a few spares, adds up to, the total adds up to four and a half grand. So stick your labour on top, which is going to be, there's probably going to be 40 hours worth of labour on the job like this, I'd have thought, depending on how many men are on it at what, at what time, we'll see, um, probably 30 or 40 hours in. You can build, you can build a decent car for hopefully going to come in at under seven grand. Um, so if somebody wanted to buy one and us to make some money on it, it'd probably be about about that. So we'll see. So, ah, nice. Fire extinguisher, that's your safety stuff. So this is an extra thing now that's not required, but definitely worth having. So what this is, this goes in your fuel line. That's a dry brake connector. So this goes on there like that. So you have, you have this little hose going into your jerry can or whatever. So when you want to drain your fuel down to make sure you're empty or you want to fill it and take 10 litres out so that you're not too heavy or whatever before qualifying or before the start of race, you just literally shove that onto there, which is stiff as hell, so I'm going to take some doing. We just shove that onto there, turn the fuel pump on. See, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to turn the fuel pump on on this. We might just have to bridge a connection or whatever. <coughs> we'll figure that out. But basically this will let you drain it out and then you just literally pull that off and that'll seal up. The reason we've gone for that, I think that's like 100 quid worth of stuff. Unnecessary, don't need it, but we've not seen it at the KA race, we've seen it at a lot of racing. Cars will come out, come out for qualifying or come out for the race and not long after set on fire. And that's literally because somebody's not tightened one of these little, tightened one of these little Jubilee clips up that holds the fuel line on and you're just going to miss coming out or it's come off completely and sprayed fuel out and you lose a car for the sake of 100 quid, especially how many times these are going to be getting drained and filled and drained and filled. It speeds things up and it's just a safety thing as well. So not necessary, but if people are racing and they're wanting to be competitive, you don't just fill the tank up to the top and see what happens. You, you want to know how much is in. So that's why I've got them. These wheels, these are made by Compromotive. Um, these ones are some used ones actually. <coughs> We're hoping to get some new ones, but they've not come into the country yet. So, um, Gray's Motorsport, we get these from. They're the sole supplier for the wheels for this. The reason we've had to go to these compromotives is because the steel wheels, which we'll try and find a picture if we can, the steel wheels are literally just ripping the centres clean out because of the fatigue, because of the age. You're putting them through a lot of trouble. So, this is a proper motorsport wheel, although it just looks like a I think the Ford case did have a wheel that looked like that, <clears throat> but this is a proper motorsport built wheel, so that should do what we need it to do. I forgot to say as well, they come from Graves, the roll cage and quite a few of the other bits that you'll see here, they all come from Burton Power, they're the main sponsors, but the stuff that we can supply, it'll be in the, in the description, so if you want to build one of these you can buy all the stuff, or if you want us to build one, we can build one for you. Um, <clears throat> so while, while we're on about wheels. These are the tyres. 
There's some Toyo, what are they? I don't even know what they are. CF2s, t proxy CF2s. So they're just a standard road tyre, 185, 60, 13. But they shave them to 5 mil, because I think normally about 7 or 8 mil tread. Shave them to 5 mil, which won't make them any better in wet, but it'll definitely make them not blistered and drop to bits and overheating dry. And to be fair, when we drove them last year, it was absolutely pouring with rain and you could still drive wheels off them. So, it, it, although you're not going fast, you're having fun. Um, so, the seat, Dave Owen, got it off, uh, got this seat off eBay, motor drive, the same as what we always run on our cars. But for this series, you don't have to have a seat that's in date, it just has to be in good condition and don't look like it's dropping to bits. And this is just out of date. I think it was 150 quid or something like that. So we'll throw that in and that'll do what we need to do. We might get some stitching and embroidery and, and that done on it at some point, but not too big a deal. And just while we're on top row, don't know what that blue roll's here for, but don't worry about that. The tough jugs are the mandatory refueling um, setup for these cars. So when you come in on a six hour race, you've got to refuel. You've got to use an unmodified tough jug. So nobody's got an advantage. It's all to keep costs down because Obviously, what had happened is GT teams or whatever, which some people who are racing some serious championships come and have a go in these, they turn up with a 10 grand refueling rig or 50 grand refueling rig and just squirt 40 litres of fuel in it in two seconds and be off. Everybody's on a level playing field if they're limiting stuff like this. So, onto the suspension and other stuff. So, the Powerflex bushes, anti roll bar bushes, uh, wishbone rear bush. Wishbone front bush, I think they're the rear, yeah, rear beam bush. They're all um, spec parts. You've got to run them from Powerflex, which we can supply them. These exhaust rubbers, they're made by Powerflex. They come from Burton Power. Apparently, these were only available from Ford last year and everybody's exhaust were dropping off, so they've had these made. <coughs> Some springs, which I don't know how much these are going to lower it by. We might take a measure and see what it does. Um, Harry's going to get it off the corner where it's pretty shortly and uh, just measure it right out Harry we'll see how much lower these springs actually are um, <coughs> Bill Stein dampers these are the spec dampers so they're not too fancy I don't, I don't think these are just um, aftermarket replacement I think they're slightly upgraded um, but we'll see um, we've got these are not mandatory parts but it's an old car and want it to be right we've got yeah, make sure you put that on quiet next time, Scott. Track rod ends, uh, sorry, track rods, track rod ends, ball joints, all decent brands. Wheel bearings. These are the wheel studs, which I think these come from Graves as well. So wheel stud, upgraded longer wheel studs and what have you. Um, brake pads. So these are Mintex. I think these are the, they don't tell you on these boxes, but Enduro K, these are the spec pads, are they? 1144s. So not, not a crap pad. Um, you know what I mean? A lot of racers like this just run a standard rope and they just drop to bits. These are the decent, the last. I think these will do six hours on a set of pads or something like that, so that's not bad. Um, Goodridge hoses. It's one of the few things on the braking system that you can upgrade again. Always a good idea if people's left calipers dangling, you never know whether they've got little nicks in them or what have you. Brake fluid free, so we're going straight to the top shelf, Mortal RBF660, which we'll be changing it every race, so we're not going to put out fancying like a Castrol SRF or whatever that new replacement is. All the rear drum stuff, so new wheel cylinders, full rebuild kit, new rear drums, which you don't have to change them, the ones that are on it might be good. Um, new front discs. The reason we're swapping all this stuff, what we'll do with the old stuff if it's in good condition, is just put it into the spares. It, it can go in a box and then if we bend a track rod end, a track rod, or a knock a track rod end off or damage a rear drum, we've got a use one that we we'll just throw on it and away we're going up putting brand new stuff on just to get you half an hour into a race. We might get some extra spares, but we'll see. Let's shift that cage out of the way. Um, <clears throat> Full service kit for the engine, two belts, one of them's a spare because as we said before they do throw them off, that's another good brand. Spark plugs which on these, I'm not sure as bad as the old uh, 1.3 engines, 
Um, not sure if they're going to be stuck in or not, so we'll give them a good soak before we get them out. Whether we get them out now or whether we have to wait till the engine's warm, we'll see. Um, gearbox oil, we're just going to use some rock oil, uh, fully synthetic stuff, that's the right stuff for this. Whether we want to put some thinner stuff in, because that's free again, to gain a little bit of extra, God knows, we'll see. Engine oil, way over spec for what it needs, but we've got barrels of it anyway, so we're going to use some long life. So if it had a DPF, it'd be in, uh, in good hands, because that oil would keep it going. Um, steering wheel, this is just an old OMP copy that we've got. We're just going to put that in for now, because they get absolutely scruffy while we're working on cars. So until we've done what we're doing, then we've got another a brand new OMP one kicking about somewhere that we'll put in. Steering wheel boss and a spacer, which we've got another spacer if we need to go a bit further, so a 40 mil one. This in here, I don't think it's open, this box, but that's the seat mounting plate, so that should just bolt straight to the floor. These bolt to that, and the seat bolt straight to that. Bit of uh, base coat and, uh, what coat is it? Oh no, it's clear lacquer, where's the, oh there. Oh, there. Whatever that says, that's what colour this car is. So we've got a bit of that if we've got any touching up to do. Um, so, car tech have got a few bits on this car. We've got the battery isolator, which these are just so easy to fit. Got a little button on outside, a little uh, two stage button on inside to kill it and reset it. And you've got your little, uh, not good at this unboxing game, just ripping boxes open. You've got a little uh, isolator here. So literally you just connect it, connect your battery up to that, so you're isolating the earth of the battery. So that earths the car and then you put the battery earth to that, which you can't really see there. And then you put the, this positive here, kills the ECU or ignition, so it can't carry on running on with the alternator. So that's where a lot of kill switches do. They'll kill the power going to it, but it'll still run on the alternator. So we've got that. Again, that, I think these are a couple hundred quid or maybe a bit more, but the easier installation and just the fact that they work every time is why we've chose this one because we'll have it fitted in an hour or so and it'll work every time we come to it we'll, we never have any problems with them we could have fitted just a pull switch for a five or whatever they're called maybe whatever they cost maybe a tenner with a kill switch and a pull cord we don't need that we don't need that hassle in his life so we've gone for that so again that's another bit of cost that can be shaved so if somebody wanted one building cheaper they could do that same with the rain light this is an FIA rain light you don't actually need to go to something as crazy as this one but from last time out on track we what we did we just made the the top brake light which will pass the regs we just put the top brake light as the rain light <coughs> on the lay on and when it will rain I don't think I don't know if it were a case where he didn't see me but somebody running to the back of me and caused a few hundred quid of damage to the layer so put a video of that up um, so this is ridiculously bright. We'll see when we put it in. Definitely worth the extra money, which I think they're nearer to 100 quid. But you can get some for 20, 30, 40 quid and they'll do the job. But again, we know what works on our car, so we're not going to ignore all that trial and error and then uh, just buy different stuff. Um, oh, look at that, wow, where are you? Rear view mirror. I think these are mandatory in the series now. So we've got the rear view, the, the long acre wide angle mirror. These are good because you can see all the way around you. You use your side mirrors still, but these give you, you normally get a brief look at, oh, there's somebody in my mirror. Look at your mirror right there at the side of me. So they're good. The standard mirrors in them are absolutely crap. So that bolts straight up to the roll cage. And away we go. So the other thing as well, electrical, this is the transponder. So this is an old style one. The new ones are subscription based, whereas these ones, you just wire them up to the battery, straight to the battery live, um, which obviously, when you kill the car, it'll turn it off. But literally just wire them up and they just work. We've had no problems with them that we've used in the past. And we've had no problems with the other ones, but they're a little bit more complicated. You've got like a, a subscription dongle thing that you're gonna mess about with. And I don't like playing with them. We've, we've got enough of them on go at the minute, so I just thought for this car, we'll just put one of them in. And we're going to make this easy to take on and off and um, to put it onto Steph's Mark too. So it's going to be on a nice bracket that comes off easy and comes off, unplugs quite nice and easy. So we'll sort that out. Um, bonnet pins. You can get some cheap ones at a fiver or something like that that'll work. But these are the aero catch ones. I prefer these because you can see when they're not on properly. 
even the marshals as you're going out at pit lane can see when these are not on properly and that's that's always been a good thing we've had a couple of bonnets come up on his cars in the past there's a lot of people working on them it can happen so people say it never happens they're talking rubbish but these are a bit more expensive but they work so we're going to put them on as well hopefully they fit on bonnets it's quite a bit curved and then the regs <coughs> now you've got to have these uh, wire towing eyes, which I'm not sure if TRS are going to still make them now. There's, com there's other companies make them anyway. But these work pretty good. Bolt these to chassis, make sure you can see them. And then you put your stickers on, which, wherever they are, I don't know what that's like. Put your stickers on with your toe and what have you. You've got to put all them aiming at it. I think there's some uh, race parts stickers in there, because that's where some of the bits have come from. So I think we've pretty much gone through all the bits. What time is it now? five past 11 so we're going to start the clock from 11 and um, everybody best get cracking with the car so I'm going to rally around get everybody uh, started on it and uh, yeah we're good to go <laughs> <laughs>